for this trip I'm in the Gila Wilderness. Uh, behind me is actually the Gila Cliff Dwellings. I'm really excited about being here. I didn't even know they were in the same wilderness area, but the parking lot for the trailhead is the same exact parking lot for the uh, Cliff Dwellings, so I'm, I'm super excited. They're behind me. I hope they come in with this lens, but I'm going to go take a closer look. I'll talk more about the trail when I get on the actual trail. Okay, so these are the Gila cliff dwellings. They're about 700 years old, um, built by Native Americans. Uh, these are rooms and old walls. And it's really, really, really cool to be in here. Uh, I wish I knew more, I wish I was an archeologist, but uh, I know the, the black uh, stains on the ceilings are from campfires. And this whole area was super impenetrable so if any other tribe of people wanted to come up here they're gonna have a hard time you can see the old timbers uh, used to hold up the walls they're still in here it's amazing This is the west fork of the Gila River. The trail that I will be following goes right along the banks. Ooh, the water is cold. This is the Gila Wilderness Loop. It's about 80 miles or so. Uh, this is the west fork of the Gila River. I'm going to have to cross it multiple times today. It's only a couple inches deep. About six inches at the deepest. Day one. Just saw the Gila cliff dwellings. I'm hoping to catch some Gila trout. Uh, critically endangered fish. Pretty much only lives here. But it's plentiful enough that I can, if I catch it, I can eat it. I am hoping, I am hoping, I'm praying that I see the Mexican wolf. The Mexican wolf is the most endangered canine in the world. There's only about a hundred of them. And they live here. Uh, the most recent sighting of a wolf on my trail was December 8th. It is December 14th now. So this is their habitat. The weather should be good, no precipitation in the forecast. But cold at night, low 20s at night, high 50s during the day. New Mexican sun, so I can deal with it. That was the skunk, it's right in there. Uh, this is about as close as I want to get.
So hiking through the Gila Wilderness, going down the initial canyon. And this is really cool. You can see behind me these uh, burned ponderosa pines. I think they're ponderosa pines. If they're not, somebody tell me. Uh, you can see a forest fire came through here. And I think it was about five years ago now. And these trees are still standing. And they are pretty big. And the Gila Wilderness is actually the nation's oldest wilderness area. We have Aldo Leopold to thank because of it. And he was actually here uh, exterminating wolves and bears from this land. And he fell in love with the idea of the wilderness, fell in love with the landscape, fell in love with the animals. He was instrumental in making sure that this was protected. Ooh, it's getting chilly, sun's going down. Check out what I found. We got a frozen pond. That means it is, it is below freezing right now. And it looks like there's some cliff dwellings up here. Oh yeah, check this out. You can see the old timbers. I'm gonna go up there, see what I can see. Whoa. So, these are some old cliff dwellings. Uh, Pretty awesome. They weren't even marked on the map. I didn't even know they were here. You can see the wood that they used to build these things with. Wow. Some old campfire smoke up in here. This is cool. Wow. And this is inside the cavern now. You can see smoke at the ceiling. Check that out. This might have been an old kitchen area back in here. And then you can still see the original timbers that's holding these things together. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. I had no idea these were here. They're not labeled on any map that I saw. I get this question all the time, and that is, why is your cooking pot so big? The pot that I'm using is two quarts, um, just about two liters. It, it is pretty large, it's not the most ultralight method, but uh, let me show you why I choose to carry this. Okay, so here is my two liter pot. This is why it's so big. I like to eat a lot of food, I'm not ashamed about it. So I got some brown rice in there, um, dehydrated broccoli, I did all this at home. That's a sweet potato right there. These uh, brown things, that's beef jerky. 
And of course we have a little pasta sides for flavor. Ooh, that's some kale, which I dehydrated at home. This red thing is a radish. Oh, it's in there. Yeah, there it is, radish. So this is why I carry such a big pot. I like to eat. Ooh, that's a Brussels sprout right in there. A lot of vegetables, a lot of meat, uh, a lot of calories, really. I'm planning to hike a lot of miles. Okay, good morning. It is day two. Eh, really day one. Yesterday was more of a half day than anything. Um, last night got really cold. Got really cold. So what I'm doing now, I'm, my socks are actually, well, they're frozen solid, as you can see. So I'm just drying them out by the fire. Same with the shoes, because there's no way I can put ice blocks on my feet. Uh, to show you how cold it is, this is my water bottle. I filled it up last night. It's solid. Yeah, it's... Check that out, it's a, uh, well, I've never slept where the water froze solid before. I've had ice in the water. Uh, so it got pretty cold last night. I had to sleep with all my rain gear on, thermals, sleeping bag. I even have a silk liner that I used. And it was still pretty cold. I had to wake up in the middle of the night, do bicycles for a couple minutes to get the blood flowing and then sleep for another hour and then wake up, do it again. Um, the goal today is to get out of this canyon. I think it's going to be a little bit warmer out of the canyon where the sun hits most of the day. And that is the plan because it's really fucking cold. This is fresh. It's frozen. So that means it might have been done last night but it's still relatively soft. This is a big predator. Um, I don't know the difference between wolf or mountain lion, but it's one of those two. Definitely not bear, because there's no berries in it. But do you see the size of this poop? This is a big animal, and it was right on this trail less than 24 hours ago. Okay, so I'm eight miles in, following the uh, West Fork of the Gila Branch. The canyon walls are just steep, steep, steep. Parts of this canyon haven't seen the sun all day, and it's pretty cold. I'm definitely amped to get on out of here because I can't do another night like last night. I can't afford to wake up at 11 a.m. Just don't have the time. Don't wanna get stuck out here. Let me show you what I'm uh, walking through.
So it looks like I got out of the steepest part of the canyon. At times you're just walking into the river and the river I was walking in was ice. I mean, it was two o'clock in the afternoon and the sun just was not penetrating those canyon walls. It was unbelievable. Uh, I saw a few white-tailed deer, one buck, two does. I uh, didn't have a chance to get the telescopic lens out for that. I was hoping to see something bigger, uh, but no, nothing yet. No fish yet. Um, the hiking's gotten a little flatter. The canyon, I'm still in it. Not as steep though, I'm very happy about that. Morale is up. Uh, walking through the pine trees now, where the sun never shines. Good morning. Day three, morning three. It is really cold outside. Uh, <laughs> it's really cold last night. I amended the trip to spend less nights outside. But the sun's up. Got to keep moving. Got to warm up my fingers and my toes. Pretty much awake all night by the campfire. So <laughs> spirits are high though. It's uh, it's gonna be a good hike. So behind me is the Gila Wilderness. I am so happy to be out of the canyons. You can see with the topography how deep these canyons really go. And, and then looking out, I mean parts of these canyons still haven't seen the sun. Uh, that's probably why it's been so cold. Uh, it's really nice up here. I'm about to take off all these layers. So the itinerary now has changed a little bit. I decided to get out of the canyons. I'm going up to the mesas, up to the high country. And so far so good. The views are spectacular. So the Gila Wilderness is over half a million acres in size. Inside it you can find deep canyons, ponderosa pine forests, forest fires, springs, cliff dwellings, wolves, mountain lions, bears. It's really, truly uh, the Wild West. First, I was hesitant about changing up the trail, shortening the loop. However, I just ran into a herd of elk and I was able to get really close. Why don't you check it out? Uh, I'll eat my lunch while you do.
I'm walking on top of a mesa. So it's very flat going, very easy hiking. It's incredible everywhere I look. All the views, 360 degrees, it's just wilderness area. Not a road, not a house, not a building, no radio towers. It's incredible out here. I'm in the middle of <laughs> a half a million acres of pure wilderness. And it feels like I'm the only person here. I think I am the only person here. This is it, this is the Gila wilderness. Got a couple more hours of daylight. I am in the main fork of the Gila River, another canyon. I know I've been uh, wary of canyons because of the cold, but so far so good. This one seems a lot wider. Uh, so I'm hoping the sun penetrates the walls a lot easier. The water's deeper too. So that's good. Maybe there'll be some fish. I don't know. I am gonna find out, that's for sure. We got some fish. Those look like suckers. And I did see a trout. And there's the trout right there. See it? Look how pretty this fish is. It is. You can tell there's a lot of oxygen in the water. This is gonna make a mighty fine meal. The thing bit right away. It must be hungry. Well, I'm hungry tonight. I'm gonna eat this. Okay, so to properly gut and clean this animal, first you wanna wash off all the dirt. Okay. Now we want to gut it. So to gut it, you go in right through the anus, and then right up the middle. Make sure you guys can see that. Okay. And then here, right underneath the tongue, it's this little flat. You cut that clean off. So there's the fish's tongue. And you should be able to grab the fish's tongue. And that's gonna grab the whole gill plate and everything. And then you take out all the guts. There you go. Let's see what he was eating. A lot of, looks like little water bugs and stuff. All right, and then I always throw that in the water so bears don't come to my campsite. So inside here, you see that nice dark blood? That is going to taint the meat. We want to get rid of that. So the way to get rid of that, is you slide your thumb in there and that is going to get all that blood out. And you can just wash this in the creek. All right, so this fish is small enough. 
just barely, but it is, um, to sleeping bag method, I like to call it, or I'm gonna remove all the skin. This really only works when it's super fresh. Uh, you just break the neck back and you just pull the skin right off the flesh. And this is a great method if you don't like eating skin to uh, remove the skin. It's that easy. You get the head. It also takes off a little bit of the belly fat, which is, uh, oh, some people don't like to eat it. Uh, so it's nice, cleans it right up. Okay. So you have the dorsal fin. You can, uh, you can just cut that right out. Again, I throw everything in the creek. The, there are some fish in the creek that will eat it. I'm sure some birds will find it uh, in the morning. I'm not too worried about it. And the tail, oh, I cut that off. And there you have it, nice and clean rainbow trout. All, um, all I have to do now is boil it up. Uh, I wish I had some oil for the pan, but I don't. Uh, so I'm just gonna poach it and it's gonna taste great. And the greatest part about this, once it's clean, I'm actually just gonna throw it in my pot, repack my pack and go find a camping spot. And then all the smell and stuff from cleaning the fish just won't be at camp. I don't have to worry too much about bears. I still have to worry about them. But it's winter time at bear spray. And uh, I'm not too afraid of black bears. Okay, so this is what I've done to combat the cold tonight. I've dug a hole <laughs> in the riverbed. And now I lined it with fresh pine needles. And the idea is that air is the best insulator. So hopefully all these pine needles working together will keep the cold from being sucked out of me. And because I'm lower in the ground, I have these walls to help uh, retain some of my body heat. We'll see how it works. Another good reason to have a big pot is to cook fish in. Now, I'm just boiling this trout, but sometimes I have oil, sometimes I have uh, breadcrumbs. So it's always a good time. Got the fire going. Got the tent set up. Down in the valley. Okay, so this trout is cooked. You can see how it just falls right off the bone. The ribs stay in place. And that is a well-cooked fish. I'm going to get pretty much every ounce of meat off of this animal. Yeah, that's looking really nice. And then I can just throw away this vertebrae when I'm done. Nice. I'm eating the fish. So this is it. Mm. It tastes sweet. That's really good, trout. Wow, that's so good. I think it tastes sweet because of the water that it's in. It's just high quality H2O. <laughs> All right, it's day four, it's snowing outside. <laughs> the pine needles definitely worked. I mean, it, was no, it wasn't that pleasant, but I didn't have to leave the tent. Uh, I still woke up shivering a few times, but my water bottles didn't freeze all the way through. There was only a little bit of ice in them. So it's good. It's really good. Uh, the snow is unexpected, but I think it's going to clear up. It's the earliest I started hiking. It's before 9 o'clock. And I'm excited. The goal today is to get out of this canyon, get as close to the trailhead as possible, and make this the last night I spend in the Gila wilderness. I'm excited to leave because it's really cold in the mornings, but during the day, this place is magical. Ponderosa pine, massive. 
and you can see the blackened bark and this tree has become so large that any forest fires that came through here only singed the outside. Now a really cool thing about this bark is that it's scaly. So see how it just comes off like that? And that's for fire protection. So when the fire comes through, it burns the outside layer, but it leaves the heart of the tree. Okay. Now the girth and the height of this tree, I would say it's at least 100 years old, maybe closer to 200. But I'm no dendrologist. But this is just a massive specimen, and you can only find these um, in safe areas away from fires. And this is down in the canyon, close to the water. There's a big rock wall. You can't see it, but right behind me, right behind you guys. And uh, this protects it from fire. And there's no other brush around it. So that goes to show that any brush around here either got burned or just wasn't here and saved this tree from the last fire. Alright, so the snow's coming down pretty hard. I'm not making the miles that I thought I was going to make, but it's about hiking to the conditions. At first I was pretty upset about not getting all the miles in that I wanted to, but sometimes you got to hike the way Mother Nature wants you to hike. And I'm having a great time. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen things that I wouldn't have seen if I stuck to the original itinerary. So this snow is unceasing. I'm going to put away this camera and get some miles in. I'll talk to you guys later. And it's snowing. <laughs> Holy hell. It's a lot of snow. I did not expect this. Wow. Gotta keep moving. Gotta keep the fingers warm. Gotta keep the toes warm. I can't stop until nightfall. This is how it's gotta be. So the snow is lessening and it's important when it's snowing out, not to sweat. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take off some of these layers. And the reason why you don't wanna sweat is because when it does get cold again, everything's gonna freeze. And then all your insulation is icicles. And we don't, I don't want that to happen. Hypothermia is not on my to-do list on this trip. Well, I got you guys here. I wanna show you something pretty cool. So I use my phone for GPS, and the telecom industry probably won't tell you this, but your cell phone has an independent GPS unit inside of it. So I don't have any service. I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. But my GPS signal comes through perfectly. I downloaded Gaia GPS, and I've just been following that trail. With this much snow on the ground, I can't see anything. So if I didn't have a GPS, I'd be lost. But like I said, uh, you can use your cell phone for this. You don't have to spend a bunch of money on an independent GPS unit. Okay, quick update, night four. Uh, sorry, I kind of stopped filming there, but the snow just kept on coming and it was really heavy for a long time, pretty much the whole day. So I put away the camera, didn't want it to get too wet. Uh, also, I, I needed to get some miles in because it was hard going and slow going. 
Uh, snow is probably my least favorite precipitation to hike in. It's just wet, it slows you down. Ugh, it was awful. Uh, but it was a good day. I'm only about 10 miles from the trailhead. Uh, it took me a little bit. You can see it's dark out now. I like to get the fire going before nightfall. But it took me a couple hours. I finally got the fire going. I'm burning trees because I'm really cold and I need to dry out all my clothes so I can sleep tonight. Uh, but other than that, it's been a great day. Um, that snow was something else. I think I got some good pictures, some good videos. Um, but it's cool, man. All right, it is day five in the morning. Snow is still here. Last night was, oh, still miserable, but uh, I survived and uh, I'm out of here. I only got about 10 miles to the trailhead. So I am excited. Okay, so that is the Gila Wilderness Loop. It's over 40 miles, I'll have the exact mileage in the description. Uh, it's a pretty unique landscape. I highly recommend coming out here. This place is truly something special. Um, right now there's about, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles of road walking back to my bike, and I'll be hitting the road again. All right, well, if you like this video, subscribe. I got plenty on the way. Check out the website, wildwesttrail.co. I'll have the GPX file available for purchase.